what proposition? Well, as you probably know, me and Ralph Purdy have quite a heavy involvement going on between us. Yes, I do, and I'm, I'm very happy for you. Oh. Thanks. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if he asked me to marry him, and if he does, you don't have to guess what my answer would be. Oh, well, I hope you don't take offense, Opal, but I think anybody in town could guess your answer. <laughs> That's what I'm going to miss about you the most, your sense of humor, Jimbo. <laughs> uh, you are? Uh, yeah. Are you uh, planning on retiring, okay? No, not exactly. Now, put yourself in Ralph's shoes. If you were him, president of Landview National Bank, would you want your old lady working in a beauty parlor? Well, I hadn't thought about it, but I take it you don't think Ralph will. Honey, I hope he don't. I hope he wants me going to beauty parlors, not working in them. <laughs> That's why I got to sell the Glamorama. And I was thinking that maybe you should be the person to buy it. Um, don't you think that's a, a little uh, premature? Why, uh, Mr. Purdy hasn't uh, actually proposed yet. No, but the smart money says that he will within a week. And when he does, I'm going to accept. So what do you say? You want to buy one or both of my glamouramas from me? I have absolutely no interest, Opal. Oh. It's not that I don't appreciate your offer. I do. I do, my dear. But look, I'll tell you the same thing that I told Mrs. Wallingford when she asked me to manage the shop. I am first and foremost an artiste. I am a hairstylist. I have absolutely no interest whatsoever in owning a business. Now, my only wish is to stay on here as a, as a respected employee and help bring out the individual beauty of each customer who enters the shop. What a great speech. Okay, I guess I'm just gonna have to try to find somebody else to buy the Glamoramas. Man, she would have to have a name like Jones for her last name. There's ten Joneses in this book yeah, here. Yeah, but the thing is, I couldn't find out whether or not she lived in Center City, Landview, or Pine Valley. Yeah, I guess we won't know until we start checking it out, though, right? Wait a minute. Mr. Tate is not going to let the baby leave this area until the adoption is final. The woman must live around here. Well, let's stop wasting time and start checking it out for all these people, right? Jesse, wait a minute. What? We can't do that. Well, how else are we going to find a baby? Look, if we call, we're just going to be alerting everyone that we're looking for him. And if we find the right Mrs. Jones, it'll be so easy for her to lie over the she phone. She has a point. She does. The woman might even tell Mr. Tate that someone's snooping around. And you know what happened then? He would move it like that, honey. Well, what are we supposed to do? Check out all these Joneses personally? It's the only thing we can do. And I think once we get our foot in the door, it's going to be so easy to tell if there's a baby in the house. Yeah. How'd you get so smart? Huh? <laughs> Come on, let's go. Wait! I don't want to bring your head down, but how do you know that you will recognize your son when you see him? Vera, I would know my son in a minute. But it's been a couple of weeks, and babies change a lot, you know, when they're that little girl. No, but he has a little small birthmark on his left arm, so I'll know for sure. Okay. Do you want me to help? Ah, uh, no thanks, Mary. We appreciate everything you already did for us. Yeah, Jesse and I can take it from here. Okay. Vera, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Hey, same goes for me, huh? Yeah. Well, look. I gotta get back to work, you gotta get yeah. going, but let me know what happens, okay? Oh yeah, you know Don't that. Don't forget. You know that. Oh. Come on. <laughs> nicest surprise I've had in days. Finding you here when I got home? Yeah. And you, you don't have to go back to the hospital? Nope, not unless there's an emergency. Oh, honey, that's wonderful. You got a nice fire going there, sir? We don't get many chances like this, do we? No, we don't. Did you have a rough day? No. No, as a matter of fact, it was remarkably quiet. Except for going over to Ian and Nelson's. Joe, you don't think she's back on tranquilizers, do you? No, I don't think so. But uh, I'm at a loss to understand what's bringing about this uh, dizzy spell. Mm -hmm. Possibly it was caused by anxiety over something. But honey, you'd think now that Greg is better, she'd be on top of the world. Yes, you certainly would. I mean, she certainly ought to be proud of him. He's a fine young man. But I, I must say, I really have admired his strength and determination these mm -hmm. past couple of months. Mm -hmm. Not to make comparisons, but uh, I sure would like to see our Tad exhibit some of these qualities. Oh, listen, our Tad mm. has good qualities of his own. Now, under, wait a minute, listen, underneath that macho exterior, there's a great deal of sensitivity, honey. Sensitivity? Yes. 
that I haven't noticed. Oh, Joe. I mean, look, look at it. Upstairs there's a mess, all over there's a mess. I mean, he's 19 years old and he still doesn't know enough to pick up after himself. Well, I, I, I think maybe he's going through kind of a rough time right now. Even though I know, I know that's no excuse. A rough time over what? Well, he and Liza are having problems. I wouldn't be at all surprised if he weren't over there right now trying to patch things up. But there you have it. Young love never did run smooth. Hmm? <laughs> no, it didn't. <laughs> Oh, you see, there's something to be said for middle age, after all. I do hope that you are not talking about us. Well, I'm certainly not talking about you. <laughs> You're never going to grow old. Uh -uh. <laughs> but truthfully, I must say, I don't think I've ever been happier. I mean, I, it's in a way, it's as though my life is just beginning. And indeed it is, Mr. Chief of Staff. Uh, I don't mean just the job, although I'm looking forward to the challenge. Just a, it's a feeling of contentment. I know. I feel that, too. And of sharing life with the woman I love. You know, I don't tell you as often as I should. But I love you very much. Mm. You're the one that asked me to give you the train back in the first place. Oh, that's right. Put all the blame on me. I should have known that you wouldn't be man enough to own up to your partner. Oh, no, 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 wait a minute. Just because you're stupid enough to leave the chain around where your daughter can find it doesn't make me the guilty party here. I don't know how, I, I don't know how I got involved in this mess. I mean, why couldn't you have been honest with me from the start, Tad? Wait a minute, you made the pass at me. No, wait a minute. You made the first pass at me and oh. I never, ever, ever would have got involved with you if I'd known you were involved with my own daughter. Oh, is that so? From what I understand, you took a few risks before I ever arrived on the scene. Yeah, well, obviously those risks didn't teach me very much, did they? Not only have I done this to Larry, but I've managed to hurt my own daughter as well. Come on, Marion. Life is a lot stronger than that. Oh, yes, man. You think whatever you need to think to deal with your own silly guilt. She is my daughter, and I know her, and I am frightened at what she might do. Oh. Do you, uh... Do you really think that, um, she'll tell your husband? Oh, would you blame her? Oh, please. Don't. You know, Larry will... He'll never forgive me if he finds out about this. And she, she may have even told him already. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, uh, Rosie, fear coming back? Well, she said she'd call if she couldn't make it. I haven't heard anything. Well, then she's coming back. She's pretty reliable. I'll have another shot, Julie. Yeah, I'll be right with you. All right. There we go. Okay. Okay. Right there. What can I get you, sweetheart? Something strong, please. Got an ID? Are you serious? I gotta ask, I gotta ask. Oh, please. Well, what'll it be? Straight scotch. To start with. Starting Monday and all through December, Daytime Dilemma returns. A daytime star may call you to predict an upcoming scene in this exciting one-minute game following Loving, One Life to Live, and General Hospital. And earn a chance to win our grand prize trip for two to see an ABC soap opera. Oh, that's fabulous. Well, tell me more. Send your name, address, and phone number to Daytime Dilemma, Post Office Box 6, New York, New York, 10046. Send in your postcards. We may be calling you to play Daytime Dilemma.